This week on 49ers Sack High Sports, we have a full show of section playoffs. We'll show you Turlock taking on Capital Christian, Lincoln meeting Center, and Burbank battling East Union. We have exciting girls hoops matchups with Rodriguez taking on Granite Bay. Soccer featuring the Division VI title game with Ben Holt College Prep and Mariposa County, plus the story of the stepbrothers from Burbank and their unbreakable bond. 49ers Sack High Sports starts right now. Welcome to 49ers Sack High Sports. I'm Aubrey Tolliver. And I'm Robert Bronstein. We start tonight in Antelope where the Titans begin their playoff run facing Rodriguez. Antelope is the sixth seed in Division II and is led by Major Sullivan's 12 points a game. The Mustangs draw the 11th seed. Senior Leroy Bryant is very fun to watch as Rodriguez gets set to face Antelope in the first round of the section playoffs Friday night. Parker Ream at Antelope for the 6-11 D2 matchup. Antelope taking on Rodriguez at home. And how about this for a start to a game? Off the tip, Major Sullivan is coming for blood. Throw it down. Then later in the quarter, Max Driffin gets it in the corner. And that three ball is pure. Antelope jumps out to an early lead. 20 seconds left. The sweet spin move here by Leroy Bryant. Kisses it off the glass and one opportunity for him. Second quarter we go. Rodriguez was heating up. Justice Wilson pulls up for three. Cash money. The Mustangs were riding high. Gianni Miles now. Shot clock winding down. Flips it up and in to get the bucket plus the foul at the buzzer. But back on the other end, it's Max with a pump fake and finishing the play through the contact and one opportunity for himself. Rodriguez only down by seven now. Miles finds Zach Chimay and he gets the contact and one. I'm sure you guys see a theme. There were a lot of fouls. Both teams tied at 39 at the half. Third quarter, Mustangs on top by three. Joseph Gould to Oliver Williams for the lay-in. Rodriguez now up five. They were bumping. What's a good basketball team without a cheer squad pumping them up? Nice job, ladies. But Antelope didn't go away without a fight. Off the missed three. Sullivan gets the board and goes up strong for the bucket and the foul. But from dusk till dawn, it was a night for Rodriguez. Leroy drops the defender out to Justice at the top of the key, and he drains the three to put Rodriguez up nine. Then it's Oliver again driving to the cup. He finishes for the easy layup. And with just seconds left in the third quarter, Wilson gets the steal ahead to Bryant. Three, two, one. Gianni Miles at the buzzer. That one's good. 15 point lead heading into the fourth. And in the fourth, all they had to do was close it out. Give me Malik Dawson from the corner, and that'll do it. Upset complete for the Mustangs. I imagine this means a lot, but I'll let the team tell you guys. Everything, man. We yeah. Yeah. Fortune Early College playing host to LeGrand in the first round of the D5 sections. We're starting these highlights off in the second half. Tyree Rose takes it himself, 55-22 Fortune. The Bulldogs looking to cut into that deficit, but the rock is stolen by Jaden Wilson, and Jaden takes it the rest of the way. LeGrand trying to get something going. Reyes Diaz finds Isaac Davison at the wing. Isaac takes the long shot and drains it, 57 27 fortune. Watch this give and go action from twins Tyree and Tyrese Rose. It's like they knew what each other was thinking. Daniel Boutron with a good game for the Bulldogs, taking the pass from Lou Aguallo and getting the shot from distance to go. Then is Davison chasing down the loose ball. Isaac dribbles it up ahead to himself, straight to the hoop. The first Panther shot is a bit off here, but Tyree gets the rebound, feeds it to Corey Lark down low, 71-32 fortune. Amari Edwards taking his time before going hard to the rack, up and under, gorgeous lay in there. Fortune dominant from start to finish. Edwards, the bounce pass down low to Jaden Wilson, and Fortune advances to the SJS Division V quarterfinals, where the Panthers will face 11th seeded Bradshaw Christian. Out to Rockland, the Patterson Tigers made the two hour trek up north to take on the Whitney Wildcats. Early on, Patterson had no sign of car sickness. Emma Medina with the pick and the breakaway two. Nine to two Tigers out of the jump. Then Medina swings it over to Raniu Manu, who just inside the three point line. It's good. Tigers extend their lead to nine. Whitney slows down the Patterson attack as super sophomore Harper Peterson drills this three. Manu for the Tigers had the runner working to perfection. In the first half, she had 14 in the game. Back and forth would go in the second quarter. Patterson 
Sierra Cozart follows the miss and gets it to fall. Tigers lead by one at the break. In the third quarter, Whitney settles down. Senior Alley Brussman hits this three-pointer, and the Wildcats take the lead. The third quarter was all Wildcats. It's Marissa Shahida over to Harper Peterson for the score. Whitney by three. Then Peterson over to Shahida, who goes deep ball, bottoms, and the Wildcats lead by 10. This was all in the third quarter where the Wildcats went on a 20-3 run as Sammy Schuler knocks down the corner three, 11 on the night for Schuler. Then senior guard Tess Fernandez takes the screen, scores with the scoop shot. Whitney wins and will now take on the Guna Creek Monday night. It was really about like playing for our seniors, letting everybody know that like for some of us it's our last game, like we got to go in or go home. Like So we just came in ready knowing that this was going to be a tough game and that we had to win to stay in it. The Gustine Reds making it to the D6 final game as the sixth seed. Let's see if they can pull off the ultimate upset over one seeded Denaire. Here are the Coyotes on the fast break. Justin Hernandez gets a shot on goal, but therefore the save is Luis Mendoza. We are scoreless until the 10th minute. Emmanuel Renteria with a very long throw, and it goes off the head of Timothy Hernandez. Then Azale Gills and into the goal. 1-0 Denaire. Gustine looking for the equalizer seven minutes later. Nestle Caballero gives it to Anthony Corrales. Anthony takes a booming shot on goal, but there with the fingertip save is sophomore keeper Sergio Torres. That gives the Coyotes a chance to extend their lead in the closing minutes of the first half. Justin Hernandez slips it past the defender, finding space between the goalie and the post. Justin finds the back of the net. We head into the half to Nair with the two-goal lead. The Reds with a shot to score late. Caballero's shot is deflected. Alan Noguez gets the rebound, finds open net, but the refs call offside, so it's still a 2-0 game. Six minutes to play. Justin Hernandez with the corner kick. Angel Sanchez the header, and Angel scores. The junior with goal number three, and that's the final goal of the day. The Denair soccer team makes the playoffs for the first time in school history and takes home the title. The team will now advance to the NorCal Regionals. Time now for the Players of the Week. These players are chosen for their standout performances from games played last week. Our first Player of the Week is Jalen Glenn from Indercom. The Tigers defeated Modesto Christian last week to remain the top team in our section rankings. Jalen scored 34 points in the win. Our second Player of the Week is downtown Tegan Brown from Oak Ridge. The Trojans beat Folsom last week 44-37 to tie Folsom for the league championship. It's only Folsom's second loss of the season. Tegan scored 27 points and is the spark plug for the Trojans all season long. Jalen Glenn and downtown Tegan Brown, this week's Players of the Week. Stanford Healthcare brings us important tips so athletes can perform at their very best. Here's Dr. Joseph Donnelly with this week's Stanford Health Tip. Patella or kneecap dislocations can occur during a twisting injury to the knee or a direct blow to the inner aspect of the knee. Often the patella will quickly relocate into its normal position, but it may remain dislocated requiring urgent treatment by a medical specialist. Typically we see a significant amount of swelling in the knee after this injury and the knee joint range of motion may be limited. Patellar dislocations are usually treated with rest, bracing, and PT for range of motion and strength with a return to sports in three to four months. Coming up, our first Sun Power Electric game, Turlock and Capital Christian meet for the start of the Division I section playoffs. Then the girls from Franklin and Edison meet on the hardwood. This is 49ers Sack High Sports. a problem America junk sleep is what you get from a bed that isn't right for you keep calling Kevin Keith junk sleep left your laptop on the bus junk sleep can't straight think slunk Jeep what you need is real sleep so maybe it's time to ask yourself did you get out of the wrong side of bed this morning or the wrong bed altogether mattress firm on junk your sleep 
Welcome back to the NBC Sports Studio here at Levi Stadium. Our first Sun Power Electric game tonight features two teams from opposite ends of the section. Capital Christian out of Sacramento is the eighth seed in Division I after finishing the regular season as the Capital Athletic League champs. Turlock brought home the Central California League Championship for the first time in over a decade. The Bulldogs will now make a push for a section title. First, they will have to get through Capital Christian in our Sun Power Electric game. Mark Willis was there. Electric game. That's right, guys. You said it best. A couple of league champs going at it tonight. An interesting matchup between senior guard Daniel Malagon and junior Gavin Cox of Turlocks, both averaging 15 points tonight up against a Capital Christian team who's very young, but they have come a long way in the second half. Senior captain Anthony Garcia and Lonnie Horn have been major contributors to why the Cougars have had so much success. This one should be a great one. That's why it's the Sun Power Electric game. Anthony Garcia playing in his final home game at Capital Christian. He moves like Jagger. I don't know if Kyle Erickson has any moves, but I do know that he has a three-point shot. Seven to one Bulldogs early. Cap Christian's Lonnie Horn to Jaden Nolan. Three ball is perfect. Cougars down seven. When we get a little playground ball here, it's Erickson to Gavin Cox. No foul. I don't know how the ball goes in, but it does. Turlock leads by 10. Then Daniel Malagon drops his three ball late in the second quarter. 34-23 Bulldogs. But with time winding down, Cap Christian's Kanye Clark comes flying in for the score, and it's an eight-point game at the half. In the third, Erickson of Turlock started off the game hot, and he stays that way in the second half. Drives and scores off the glass, Bulldogs up 16. Then Michael Heidelback finds the sharpshooter Kyle Erickson from the top of the key. Erickson with 27 in the contest. The Cougars close out the third quarter with this. Anthony Garcia pick and dip. CC trails by 15. On the inbounds, Clark finds Garcia at the top of the key, and the future SJSU quarterback might want to give college hoops a try as well. When Malagon drops this triple, it was his fourth of the night and extends the Bulldogs' lead to 20. Malagon had 12. Garcia trying to rally the troops as the Cougars apply the pressure. Garcia with the ball, and he knows how to make a highlight reel. Anthony had 20 in the contest. But this would be the night of the Bulldogs. We have an Andrew Johnson sighting pulling down the miss and scores it as Turlock wins big on the road. 71-53, and the Bulldogs get top-seeded Intercom Tigers Monday night. Uh, it was a great win. We came into this, and we just wanted to put it all together, and we really did. We were hitting shots in our defense. We, we really emphasized the defense. Nathan Sin came in and put in his defense, and we really, really trying to stay, stick to that and stick to what we know, and it really worked out today for a win. For the Sun Power Electric game, I'm Mark Willis for the United Sack High Sports. Brian Mueller saying hello from Stockton Thursday night for a D1 first round matchup between host Edison and Franklin. First quarter, Tierra Snipes inbounds it to Makai Nunn, and she gives it right back to Snipes, who finishes, takes a tumble, and gets the foul. Vikings with the early lead. Later in the quarter, Jasmine Klee running free gets it to Jade Edinburgh, who nails the three to cut the lead in half. Second quarter now, Wildcats still keeping it close. Isabella Whitehead to Caitlin Horos. In the quarter, she shovels it to Symphony Coleman, who keeps her composure and makes it. It's 18-9 Edison. Later the second, the Vikes still in control. Amani King dumps it down to Snipes, who passes out of the double team to Alyssa Soria for the lay-in. Edison up by 13. Vikings continue to share the ball. Alana Bella on the run to Destiny Adams and then to King. Aesthetic basketball by Edison. But the Cats close the half strong. Edinburgh to Whitehead, who beats the clock with the three. And it's 29-19 heading into halftime, where we were treated to a sweet display of handles by a future Viking. In the third, Edison keeps it coming. None to Snipes, who gets another and one. Edison up eight. Later in the third, how does Bella make this pass? Finds none on the cut for another pretty play. Vikings pulling away in the fourth. None with a no look to Snipes for another basket. She a game high 32 as Edison advances with a 58-31 win. They get St. Mary's on Monday. I just work every day, go to practice every day, put in all the work. I practice like how we work in the game to make myself better as a person and as a player. I really want our team to go to state, so as long as we keep putting in work and keep improving, then I think we got a chance. 
out to Shingle Springs where third seeded Ponderosa hosted the sixth seed Manteca High in a Division Three showdown. Let's get right to it. In the seventh minute, Sienna Jones touches it to Emily Craighead who gets it over to Cameron Silva and she shows us why she's so talented. Splitting the defense to score the first goal. In the 37th minute, Cami Silva was at it again. This time she boots a 32 yard laser past the defense, past everyone. Just like that, the Buffaloes lead it two to one thanks to the foot of Silva. It's still a two nil ball game for Manteca in the 64th minute now. Pondo's Kyla Daniels slips it past to Pablo Dauber who takes a shot but is blocked, not controlled, and that allows Caitlin Price to send it home. One point game. Kyla Daniels again for Pondo with the ball. She finds some open space and is able to drill it in. This game is tied up with under 10 minutes to play. Right before overtime, Ponderosa's Tyron Thalhammer takes the free kick and comes inches away from a goal, but the Buffalo's Marissa Sora stops it from going in. We now are in the 98th minute, and Pondo's Brooklyn Hayes, she turns and she burns, booting it. 20-yard strike, and that would be enough as Ponderosa survives a close one and wins 3-2. Coming up, East Union begins postseason play facing off against Burbank. Then you'll meet this week's inspirational athletes also from Burbank. But first, take a look at our Sac Joaquin section girls basketball top 10 poll. Every day, the sun comes up. And right on cue, the work begins. We start every morning, knowing full well we are in it for the long haul. Our work is a labor of love. No task too small, no moment uncherished. And although we're not often thanked, we rest knowing that our work is making a brighter future. This is more than milk. Right now, my electrical bill is about $10 a month. This is definitely one of the best investment we did in our house. All over the country, people are taking control over their electric bills by going solar with SunPower. We offer the most efficient, durable panels on the market, so you can see a return on your investment every month. I was paying $220 a month. Now I pay about $22 a month. Right now, 49ers faithful get a $1,000 Visa reward card from SunPower. Go online today. The Burbank Titans finish the regular season with a 17-8 overall record and begin postseason play as the seven seed in Division Three. The Titans feature two very strong seniors. They are stepbrothers Isaiah Griffin and Omari Nesbitt. Both are averaging over 20 points a game. Yeah, and East Union draws the ninth seed, so the Lancers traveling from Manteca up to Sacramento for the first round. Brian Howe is very good for the Lancers and is looking to lead his team to a far run in the playoffs. It's Burbank hosting East Union Friday night. Sam Berg reporting here for some D3 playoff hoops between the East Union Lancers and the Burbank Titans. And the Titans got the ball rolling early. Ty Harrison steps back from behind the line and swishes the three to get the Titans on the board early. But the Lancers had shooters of their own. Luke Weaver kicks it out to Brian Howe and he drains the three in the corner to even it up. But the early scoring was not over for the Titans. Amari Nesbitt drives to the hoop and banks it off the glass for a pair of points. But the Lancers were not about to let their lead slip. Dylan Lee pulls up for the three and swishes it from downtown. Great shot there. But Burbank plays both sides of the ball. Isaiah Griffin gets the steal and takes it to the hoop and lays it in there to finish off the first half with the Titans on top. On to the second half now and the Lancers were not going down easily. Lee puts up the floater inside the paint and gets it to drop for two points. But the Titans were starting to pull away. Nesbitt steps up for the deep three ball, but that's no problem at all when you're hot like that. But the Lancers were not going down without a fight. Anthony Sy steps back and drains the three from the corner to keep East Union's hopes alive. But the Titans had their foot firmly on the gas. Brandon Haley Jr. drives to the basket and lays it in there with a nice right-handed move. But the Lancers still had time to make their comeback. Howe shoots this long jumper from behind the line and banks it in there after a couple of bounces. But the Titans defense would be the dagger. Nesbitt gets the steal and takes it all the way back and lays in the two-pointer to seal the deal Friday night. The Titans get the dub Monday in advance to play El Camino for the D3 quarterfinal matchup on Monday. Each week we bring you stories of athletes who inspire us. We just saw Omari Nesbitt and Isaiah Griffin lead their team to a first round playoff win. Brian Mueller sat down with a pair of inseparable stepbrothers whose connection goes way beyond the court. Mike. 
Away from the bright lights, the screaming crowds, and the hardwood floors, this is where Burbank seniors Amari Nesbitt and Isaiah Griffin learned the game of basketball. We don't ever need a gym. We be outside all the time. Like, we grew up with no gym. Like, we never be in the gym. We always be outside. Kind of helped us make it more hungry. Everybody else get to go yeah. to the gym, get a shoe machine. We got to go grab our own rebounds. We got to fight. Like, we got to get everything out the mud. Everybody else we get spoon fed. Their skills refined and resolve hardened on the concrete court, a scene that has played out countless times over the years. You'll rarely see one without the other. But Isaiah and Omari's bond goes beyond basketball. They're also stepbrothers, but in name only. I don't look at him as a stepbrother. That's like my blood brother, right? He mean a lot to me. Like, if I lose him, I don't know what I, I'll flip. Sheree Rushton is Omari's mother, once a standout softball player at Valley High, and Ben Griffin is Isaiah's father, one of the area's most prolific scorers at Burbank in the 90s. When their families came together 12 years ago, Isaiah and Omari had an instant connection. For me, it was like, okay, how are we, how are we gonna work this? You know, they act like they known each other for years. You know, it was no arguments. I think they probably argued or fought maybe one time since I think they were like seven. The perfect match, that's why mm -hmm. some people say, Opposite of the track, it's that right there. Amari is, I mean, people call him an introvert. You know, he's quiet, you know, kind of stays to himself, which is a good thing. Isaiah's outgoing. They're two different, totally different people. But when they're on the, when they're on the court, it's together. It's a symmetry that is intangible. It's like telekinetic. You don't, you don't see them communicating with each other, but it's like they know each other on the court. And statistical. Isaiah is averaging 22.6 points per game, Amari 22.3. Isaiah averages 4.1 assists per game, Amari has four. The brothers push each other, and that goes beyond the court. Amari had a 4.0, not on the court. He had a 4.0. Then next one, next time the grades came out, Isaiah had a 4.0. And that's what you need. You need somebody to compete with, even on your own team, and your own family, especially when it's in your family, because it's always going to be positive. He pushed me like, to go harder, and I push him to go harder. He helped me get better, and I help him get better. That's the way things were for Isaiah and Amari, always together, until 2016. Isaiah had to move to Virginia with his mother. The brothers were apart for the next four years. It was tough transition. Like, I missed everybody, like my whole family. It was rough at first, but I kind of got used to it, but then I still miss my family still out here, so. It was hard. Like, it was, like I missed him a lot. Like, it was, it was very hard. Ben went through a lot during that period. Um, I went through a lot emotionally, the kids, because you're basically taking their best friend away. It, it was hard. It was, it was tough. Uh, I mean, the kids had to go to counseling. Like, it, it, was, it was tough. Things aren't perfect in life and basketball. They don't always work out. Not every shot goes in. But for every miss, there's a chance at a rebound. And Omari never gave up hope that his brother would return. In my head, like deep down, I always knew like one day he'll come back. So I always stayed positive and just waited and stayed patient. Omari's patience paid off when Isaiah came back last year. And the two have led Burbank to a 17 and eight regular season record in their senior seasons. And once Isaiah came, it was just like, okay, I, I, I'm here now, you know. I got, I got my Batman, I got my Robin. Right, right. Either one, either how you could take it, Batman mm -hmm. or Robin. Well, Omari got his brother back last year. He also lost someone very special. His grandfather, Raymond Rushton, passed away suddenly in October of last year. Omari has decided to dedicate his senior season to his grandfather's memory. He told me, like, you're going to the league, like, you're going pro, like, just keep working. Every game, like, I play for him. Amari hopes to honor his grandfather by making it to the NBA. But before that, the Burbank brothers have plenty left to accomplish on the high school court and beyond. I mean, they got so much growth going on. It's, you know, the next level where they go, I mean, wherever they go, it's going to be a little learning curve, but I know they're going to fit right in. And just like everything else, they want to take that journey together. Are you guys a package deal? <laughs> yeah. That's the plan. Yeah. That's what brothers got to do. Like, we got to stick together no matter what. Brothers always got to stick together. Reporting in Sacramento, Brian Mueller, 49ers, Sac High Sports.
Omari scored his 1,000th career point two weeks ago and dedicated it to his grandfather, but the two are inseparable and they want to eventually end up at the same college. Hopefully, hopefully they can do that. Very nice. Thanks, Brian, for that. Coming up on Matches Firm Perfect Match, it's the Division VI title game for girls soccer. Then Riverbank and Capital Christian meet in girls hoops. But first, here's this week's Spirit Corner featuring the cheer team from Rio Americano. <laughs> When the lights go up and the crowd starts to cheer, you know you just scored a winning deal. Tracy Toyota has all the deals to make you feel like the winning team. Get 2.99% APR for six years on a new Toyota RAV4 during the President's Day sales event. Don't fumble this opportunity to save. Visit Tracy Toyota now. We take the stress away at Tracy Toyota. Exit Nagley Road off Freeway 205 or at TracyToyota.com. With you all the way. Unjunk your sleep during Mattress Firm's President's Day sale. Right now, get a king for a queen or a queen for a twin and save up to $500 on our wide selection of top-selling brands. Plus, get a free adjustable base with qualifying Sealy purchase up to a $4.99 value. Or shop hot buys and get up to 50% off, like Sealy Twin Mattresses starting at $224.99 or Sleepy's Twin Mattresses starting at $159.99. In stock for fast delivery, only at Mattress Firm. 49ers Sack Eye Sports is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By Stanford Healthcare, number one in Northern California for orthopedics. And by SunPower, proud sponsor of the San Francisco 49ers. Soccer playoffs are in full swing this week with the Division 5 and 6 championship games being played Saturday at Kasumnas River College. Ben Holt Academy girls earning the top seed in Division 6, making it all the way to the title game. The third seeded Mariposa County Grizzlies upsetting Ripon Christian Wednesday, earning a shot at the Division 6 title. Each week we scour the section for the perfect match on the field, just like Mattress Firm wants to find you a mattress that is your perfect match. This week's Mattress Firm Perfect Match is the battle between Ben Holt and Mariposa County. Parker Ream here at Kasumnas River College. A beautiful day for some quality soccer. The D6 Girls Championship between Mariposa County and Ben Holt. Fast forward to the 24th minute. Esmeralda Cardona sends it in. It's tipped around, but a handball in the box sets this up. Lexi Schmeirer steps up and drills it to put Ben Holt up 1-0. But they weren't done there on the counterattack now. Just seven minutes later, Bailey Roberson putting the team on her back, taking it all by herself for the goal. And the Bobcats took a 2-0 lead into the half. Second half. More of the same. Bailey trying to get a second goal, but it hits off the post. But don't worry, they'd get the third eventually. Lexi heads it in, and Eliana Cervantes stays with it and taps it past the keeper. 3-0, and that would be the final. Let the coronation begin. I caught up with the team after the win. They came, they saw, they conquered. Ben Holt is your D6 girls champ. Yeah! That was, uh, that was pretty good, and it, it, wasn't, it wasn't awkward. That was, that was great. Thank you, All right, thank you. we start with Lexi. You were the first one to get in the scoreboard in the scoring column today. What was that like taking that penalty kick and uh, having it go into the back of the net? I was so nervous, but it was so rewarding. I mean, this whole season, I love all these girls. It was for all of them. <laughs> We head over to Bailey. Bailey, you took two shots to the gut uh, in this game. I mean, as gritty of a performance as it could be, and you scored a goal as well. I mean, what does this say about not only your grittiness, but this team's grittiness to get this job done? Today? It says that we want to get what we get. I mean, or <laughs> we'll get what we want, you know? We'll, we'll get it if we really want it, you know? We, we're gonna get it. <laughs> and they did get it. They got the win today. We head over to Helene holding it down in goal. Helene, yeah! how far can this team go? Very, very, very far. We, like like she said, when we want it, we get it. And we have, like, we're, we just we just go for it, yeah. 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 All right, I'm going to let these guys take it out. Come on, let's Thank hear it you. one more time. Go ahead. Yeah!
The Riverbank Bruins squaring off against Capital Christian in the first round, a battle between the 11 and 6 seeds. Chances Games gives her team an early lead with a couple of made three balls, but Danelli Allen for the Cougars also with the hot start here driving to the rack and earning the and one opportunity. Some quick passes from Allen and India Isaac give Nani Lowe's a chance for two. Nani gets it to go. Riverbank with a one point lead until Allen takes a shot from far and sinks it. 19 14, Cap Christian after one. Second quarter, Cheyenne Torres fighting hard for the loose ball. Torres kicks it out to Taylor Macias, who drives up the baseline and gets the bucket. And the Bruins reclaim their lead when the pass from Livy Fernandez finds Games in the corner. Games knocks down her third three of the half. Riverbank up by two. Cap ties it on the next possession. Camilla Braggs down low to Lupe Ahutafe. We are tied at 21. Second half, Allen pulling up for the long two, banking it off the glass. 23 on the night for Danelli. Cap with a six point advantage. Riverbank hanging in there. Livy Fernandez, four, three. The Bruins down by just three. Allen getting it done from all angles. We've seen her shoot from far. Here is Danelli down low as Cap extends her lead to 13. Games throws it across to Masias. Watch Taylor maneuver through traffic and get the bucket to go. Some beautiful moves there, but there was no stopping the home team. Nani Lowe's goes in strong to the rack and one. Nani pumped about that one. Then India Isaac nabs the rebound and puts it right back. Cap Christian lives to see another game with a nine point win over Riverbank. The Cougars will face Colfax on Monday. Brian Mueller appearing on the pitch in a D1 quarterfinal matchup between four seed Folsom and five seed Indercom Wednesday night. Scoreless late in the first, Kaylee Stroh has the free kick, sends it into the box, and what do you know? She finds her sister Maddie Stroh to redirect it in. No doubt they practiced that one before. The sister act gives the Bulldogs a 1-0 lead. Second half, dogs looking for more. Angelina Kozinek crosses. Morgan Halverson gets a foot on it, but Nolani Huara is there to make the save. A minute later, the Tigers have a chance of their own. Emmy Nogin puts it on a tee for Allie Lucas, who nearly finds the back corner equalizer. But Indercom would keep coming. About 12 minutes left, Liliana Jimenez breaks loose, but Izzy Palmatier not only stops it, she doesn't give up a rebound. IZZY keeps it scoreless, and Folsom wins it one to nothing. They advance to the semis on Friday, where they lost to Oak Ridge. Coming up, more Division Three playoff action with Center taking on Lincoln. Then it's the girls from Davis and Monterey Trail beginning postseason play. 49ers, Sack High Sports will be back in a moment. The Center Cougars finished the regular season in second place in the Pioneer Valley League behind Marysville. The Cougars begin the section playoffs drawing the eighth seed in Division Three. Senior James Cook Jr. led the Cougars in scoring all season long. Center also has a sophomore doing really well this year. His name is Jeremiah Butler. The eight-seeded Cougars taking on the ninth-seeded Lincoln Fighting Zebras. Senior Jake Overbay is putting up over 17 points a game for Lincoln, while junior Benny Jomo is averaging around 15 points a game. Lincoln traveling to Antelope to take on center Friday night. Nick Pecorero here with a Friday night Division Three opener between the number eight center Cougars and number nine Lincoln Fighting Zebras. Here we go, first quarter, Benny Jomo gets the Zebras going with a strong drive to the rack, but center answers right back as sophomore Jeremiah Butler takes his defender to spin class and goes hard to the hoop. Butler again, this time on defense, he looks up and finds Edward Powell under the hoop for an easy bucket, and then Powell working from the top of the key with the Troy Palomalu hairstyle, never not working. Center goes on an 8-1 run, and then Tim Koriaka finds James Cook in the corner who puts on his chef's hat and sprinkles in a tray right here to close out the first half up 31-25. Boy, this Cougar team can shoot. Third quarter, Alex McCord takes over for a bit. He drains a three here, and this is not an instant replay. McCord says, thank you, sir, may I have another? Center up 13 in the third, but we've got a zebra sighting. Jake Overbay steps into the lane for a pull-up J, and then Chase Ferguson in grand pursuit of a loose ball here. He gets the floater to go, and then Marco Bales splits a pair of Cougars to help the Zebras fight back into this game. They're down just four heading into the fourth, and then Overbay gives them a one-point lead with this three. But the Cougs went unbeaten at home in the regular season. They were out to protect their house. Cook gets the put back and then finishes with the fast break. He had 16 points and 13 rebounds to lead center into Monday's Division III quarterfinal. 
our first quarter was rocky, but once we locked in, we, we, we got on track, we started making our runs, and I feel like that's how we close out the game. We miss out on that opportunity, these close games where you, you just get that nervous feeling in your stomach, but I feel like we're, we're prepared for it. You know, we miss out on a junior season, but we're ready now. We're ready senior year. Parker Ream at Monterey Trail High School for the first round of the CIF SJS D1 playoffs. Mustangs taking on the Blue Devils, and it was the Mustangs that came running out of the gates. Kiara Council finds some space in the corner and knocks down that three ball. But Davis answered right back. Tessa Scouten down low in the post finishes over a few defenders. Both teams trade buckets. Monterey Trail up 7-4 to four now. Paris Brown has it on the wing, gives it up to LaKayla Hale, and that three-pointer from the top of the key is smooth. A few minutes later, LaKayla jumps the lane for the steal, and she does it herself. Thought about going inside, but instead stops and pops for the mid-range J. Mustangs were rolling early. Now up 13 to five. Jada Gray taking the ball up. She dishes it to Heaven Denton, and a match made in heaven. That three ball from the corner. Mustangs up 16 to five after one. But Tessa wasn't about to roll over. She drives the lane and gets the layup to go. But Monterey Trail was just too strong. Hale running the floor. And the nice pass up ahead to Paris Brown, who gladly takes those easy two points. Mustangs up 20 now. 30 seconds left in the half we go. Naime Johnson with the rejection. Up ahead to Aaliyah Youngblood. The no-look pass to Brown, who gets another easy layup. Great team ball put the Mustangs up 44-19 at the half. Second half, Davis came out showing some fight. First possession off the miss. Mara Bledsoe gets the board and the bucket, but the Monterey Trail lead was just too much. Fourth quarter foot on the line, but a smooth two-point jumper from LaKayla. Then with 10 seconds left, heaven to Jacqueline Slam, called up from JV and getting buckets in the playoffs. She wraps this one up as MT advances to face the number one seeded Oak Ridge Trojans. We're going to play every game like it's our last. We know Oak Ridge is a team to beat. We know they have a lot of strengths that we don't, but at the end of the day, as you play as a team, you do what you can. Big Track practice finishing up at Davis just in time for the Lincoln of Stockton team taking on Jesuit. I'm Mark Willis. Let's start in the 28th minute. Jesuit on the attack, but a great save by the Trojans keeper Dexter Zindel with a great first half, stopping the Marauders' attacks. No score till the 42nd minute. Jesuit's Caleb Afsari with the cross, and Will Sargent just kind of redirects it into the goal. 1 0 Marauders. Minutes later, Sam Nuno for Jesuit with the fake. Then attacks the goal, finds MJ Giles, whose big left foot knocks it home. And this game is starting to get away from Lincoln, but not so fast, my friends. Lincoln's Julio Garcia playing with the ball, then takes a stab at it and quickly boots it past the keeper. Trojans on the board. We skip ahead to the 79th minute, Lincoln's last chance. Alfredo Rodriguez, a sliding kick. It's high enough. It's hard enough. Oh, what a perfect shot. We're all tied up at two and ended up going in overtime. No score in OT, so we go to PKs. Both teams netted the first four attempts. Lincoln's Luis Ochoa with the shot. The keeper gets a hand on it, but he can't stop it from going in. That leads to this. Jesuit for the tie, but the ball goes off the post, and it's all over. Lincoln of Stockton survives and advances as they narrowly escape the victory in PKs. Each week we present the Scholar Athlete Award. This week's Scholar Athlete Award goes to Susie Lung from McClatchy Soccer. Susie is fantastic on the pitch and amazing in the classroom, earning an incredible 4.57 GPA. Very impressive. Coming up, our second SunPower Electric game, it's Bella Vista squaring off against Granite Bay. Then it's Lathrop and Manteca Girls. But first, here is this week's Cal Hope Mental Health Tip. It's hard to be happy and relaxed during this stressful time. So when you're home, make a game plan for mental wellness. Watching or reading too much news about the virus can be overwhelming. It's okay to tune it out sometimes and give yourself a break. The more we learn about COVID-19, the more questions we have. The biggest question now, what's next? What will COVID bring in six months, a year? If you're feeling anxious about the future, you're not alone. Cal Hope offers free COVID-19 emotional support. Call 833-317-4673 or live chat at calhope.org today. Unjunk your sleep during Mattress Firm's President's Day sale. Save up to $500 on Sealy when you get a king bed for the price of a queen or a queen for a twin. 
or Shop Temper Pedic, the most highly recommended bed in America, and you can save up to $500 on adjustable mattress sets. And get a $300 instant gift, good toward sleep accessories. In stock for immediate delivery, only at Mattress Firm. Our second SunPower Electric game tonight is a matchup between the eight and nine seeds in Division Two. Granite Bay is the higher seed and gets set to host Bella Vista Friday night after finishing the regular season with a 16 and 12 record. The 18 and eight Bella Vista Broncos play in the tough Capital Valley Conference, finishing in third place in that league. The battle between Granite Bay and Bella Vista is our second SunPower Electric game. Brian Mueller was there. Electric game. Robert and Aubrey, Granite Bay is making their first playoff appearance in five years, and we are here to see it Friday night for our Sun Power Electric game. They're hosting Bella Vista, a rematch from a game back in December that the Grizzlies won 65 to 45. Starting with the Broncos, they are led by senior Brandon Carlton, an all-league first teamer, and the Grizzlies feature a talented junior guard, Jakob Mir. He's averaging 23 points and six assists a game. Let's get to our Sun Power Electric game. Grizz Nation showing up as always. The Broncos bucking early though. Nick Lira sends it into Jack Raymond down low and he puts Vista up 12 to five late in the first. Later in the quarter, Carlton with some fancy moves and floats it in to give BV a nine point lead. But the Grizz would break out of hibernation in the second quarter. Trevor Alfstad slings it to TJ Mavidi, hits the three, Granite Bay down three. Grizzlies continue to go on a big run. Mir the fadeaway J and Granite Bay is up two now. Two and a half left in the quarter and it is Mavidi again makes it a five point Granite Bay lead. Then Mir caps off a 23 to four run with the lay-in and the Grizzlies are up 33-24. To the second half now, Broncos hanging around. Damian Rickett to Raymond. Bella down by just seven. But the Grizzlies on the go again. Zaid Sharif to McCade Long, and it's back to a double-digit lead. Later in the quarter, Mir motoring to the hoop and lays it in. GB up 13. Late third now, it's Mir to Mavidi, and it was this kind of night for TJ. The friendly home rim see the shot through. The Broncos continue to battle in the fourth. Chad Cornell hits the deck for the rebound and then bounces it from the ground to Warris Singh. A creative assist for Cornell, but how about a little more from Mavidi? Another three ball, part of a 37 point night for the senior. Granite Bay wins at 72 to 60. They'll face St. Mary's on Monday. He knocked off Ponderosa. Here's TJ on that key second quarter run. Coach just told us play hard, play fast. We did a great job on defense, securing the rebound and just going. It felt amazing. Just to rep represent the school and all these people over here, give them something to cheer for. It felt great. Reporting in Granite Bay, Brian Mueller, 49ers Sack High Sports. Tracy Area Sports coverage is presented by Tracy Toyota off Freeway 205 in Tracy, with you all the way. The Manteca student section showing its support for their girls as the Buffaloes face Lathrop in the first round. Cameron Janilla with a fast start out of the gate, taking the pass from Marcy Chaparro, driving and pulling up for the mid range. Then it's Michaela Kakala to Janilla behind the arc. Cameron knocks down the triple. 10 3 Manteca with three minutes to go in the first. Lathrop looking to climb back from the early deficit. Haven Urbina Theory kicks it out to Michaela Springs, who makes it splishy splash. 11 7 Manteca. Tika still up in the first. Izzy Sanchez finds the lane and through three Spartan defenders goes in for the score. But Lathrop answers on the other end with an Egypt Jenkins mid-range shot. It's a five-point Buffalo lead after one. And an 11-point Buffalo lead at the half when Chaparro beats the halftime buzzer with a sick bucket. 24-13 Mantica. Lathrop has some work to do and it starts with Kirsten Constantino after a quiet first half. Kirsten was about to make a splash. Springs and Constantino with a little give and go. Michaela puts it up, knocks it down and draws the foul. Fourth quarter, Alaba Olela up ahead to Isa Panagua. Isa breaking some ankles and going in with the underhand shot. 
five to go. The far rebound, Issa is quick to it. She passes to Constantino and Kirsten. All the way from downtown, Lathrop drains in. That shot makes it a three point game. Kirsten with a team high 15, but was it enough? Less than a minute later, Ariel De La O to Marcelina Chaparro. Marcy extends the Manteca lead back to six. Then the duo switches it up. Chaparro to De La O and the freshman comes in clutch. 45-40, Manteca takes home the victory, advancing to the quarterfinals where they will face Lincoln. Cameron Janilla with a double-double and here she is. Super excited, uh, first round. I'm just looking forward to the next round. And I think we all work together as a team like super well. We executed and we put them shots up. So there's not much more we can ask for. <laughs> Remember, all of the game footage we shoot is available for purchase on our website. Go to 49ersSackHighSports.com. We'll send you the entire game digitally. Follow us on social media for lots of fun and exciting content. Our Instagram story is a great way to keep updated with scores, news, and so much more. 49ers.SackHigh is our handle on Instagram and Twitter. Coming up, it's Vacaville and Jesuit in the Division Three playoffs. Then it's Rodriguez and Granite Bay Girls. 49ers Sack High Sports will be right back. Elk Grove and Sheldon split the league title in the Delta League, coming in third place with a 13 and 13 overall record is the Jesuit Marauders. Jesuit, the seven seed in Division Three, features senior Kai Wallen, who was a force on the football field back in the fall as a powerful tight end. Jesuit taking on 10th seeded Vacaville in the first round. These two teams met at the start of the season with Jesuit taking home an 11 point victory in that one. But that was over two months ago and the two teams now face off in a do or die scenario with the winner advancing to the quarterfinals. The Jesuit student section hoping to see its Marauders make a far run in the playoffs starting off against Vacaville. Andre Stoyakovich driving the far side. The junior pulls up and sinks the fadeaway. A nice shot there. Then it's Stoyakovich taking it himself. A few strong steps to the rack before laying it in. Andre with 10 points in the first quarter and he was pumped about the Marauders hot start. Harold Andrews gives it to a driving Jaden Galliano. Jaden finishes the job 17-11 Jesuit after one. Anthony Wiley drives through the paint and puts up the floater. It's a two point game. But Jesuit extends its lead to 11 with three and a half to go in the half with the Owen Ubaldo three. Cole Epperson with the rebound and a fantastic feed to a Johnny Lewis. Lewis gets it to go 38 23. Jesuit at the half. But Vacaville not going anywhere. Wiley with a strong pass in the corner to Gavin Hamill. The Bulldogs make this a four point game. But Stoyakovich, killer on both sides of the ball tonight. Here he takes the feed from Ubaldo and Andre flushes it. Andre with 26 on the night. Devin Sorcy more for Vacaville with 26 as well. 56 52 Jesuit with two minutes to go. The Marauders go on a 10 point run to close it out. Kai Wallen putting the icing on the cake. Jesuit lives to see another game. The Marauders set to face Elk Grove in the quarterfinals Monday. Nick Pecorero here with the D2 8 9 matchup. Rodriguez visiting Granite Bay. Here we go. First quarter, the bank was indeed open Thursday night for Ali Tanfani. She hit three triples off the glass Thursday night. Then on the defensive end, Julianne Carterill with the pick gives it up to Sydney Howes who beats the first quarter buzzer. Grizzlies up 16 to eight after one, but Rodriguez makes a run in the second. Fourth year senior Cameron Washington heads up court for the easy two, and then she finds Rose Jamison inside who passes up a good shot for an even better one. Renaya Vaughn with the finish and the Mustangs make a 10-2 run in the second. How about some D, Brooklyn Giles with an emphatic rejection. Sorry, not sorry but the Grizzlies stayed poised. Their fourth year senior, Julia Riley, sends Granite Bay into the half up 31-25. But here come the Mustangs in the third. Washington goes into the Grizzlies' den and comes out with the honey, a sweet and one, and all of a sudden the Mustangs are up by three. But the CSU Bakersfield bound Riley answers back to tie the score at 39. But the Mustangs finish strong as Renaya Vaughn cleans up her own miss and the Mustangs are up three heading into the fourth. The GB seniors fighting for their playoff lives. Riley to Cotterill to get within two midway through the fourth. But Rodriguez goes on a run as Washington walks the tightrope and gets the nifty Euro step to fall. And here is the dagger. Rose Jamison with the tray to cap a 10-0 run. And the Rod Squad goes on the road and gets their first playoff win since 2007. 
it means a lot. It's our first playoff win. So it's like we came such a long way from freshman year to now, and it just feels really good, undescribable. Galt and Vista Del Lago meeting in the second round of the section playoff starting off in the first minute. James Gaffney kicks it ahead to Josh Mall. A little give and go action. Gaffney is back with it, but Jonathan China is there with the save. It stays scoreless until the 20th minute. The ball finds Edgar China. He kicks it out to Miguel Garcia, who one times it home. Galt with the one goal advantage, and that's number 27 on the season for Garcia. Two minutes later, Garcia looking for another, but the bending free kick is knocked out of the way by keeper. Jacob Granados and that was a fantastic save. Vista looking to get on the board before the end of the half. Colin Veers passes through a defender's legs to Adi Jory. Jory finding the far corner and we are tied at a goal apiece heading into the final 40 minutes. Just a minute and a half in. Jordy to Veers who lays a perfect ball for Bryce Pondo. Pondo finds the back of the net. The score is flipped in favor of the Eagles. Bryce with another goal a short time later off the free kick as Vista starts to run away with this one. It takes just a couple minutes for Vista to get back on the board. Ryan Anderson passes to Veers in front of the net. Colin goes in with the chip shot and it's good for another Vista Del Lago goal. It's now 4-1 Eagles. Watch this hustle from Adi Jory beating one opposing player to the ball then escaping a sliding warrior before tracking it down before the end line. Jory then finds a wide open Abdul Karim Ba and the junior converts. It's now 5-1 in favor of Vista Del Lago. Abdul Karim scores once more before the final whistle. Josh Maul delivers it to William Wong. Wong's pass goes off a defender, but Abdul Karim nabs the rebound and scores. 6-1 Vista Del Lago, the final in Folsom. and the Eagles advance to the semifinals behind a two-goal game from Bryce Pondo and Abdul Karim Ba. Coming up, let's use the play of the week. It could be this play. Stick around to find out. But first, take a look at our Sac Joaquin section top 10 boys basketball poll. Time now for the play of the week. It's the maniac Mark Willis who will name off some contenders and then award the play that we all thought was the best of the best. Yeah, but Rodriguez, Brooklyn, Giles, get that out of here. Bella Vista's Chad Cornell from the ground. He gets the assist. How about Anthony Garcia, the steal and the dip for Capital Christian. And Kai Willen for Jesuit, there's no dip for him. It's a major throw down with power. Turlock, Gavin Cox, I don't even know how he made that shot. Mantecas, Marcy Chaparro with the kiss up the glass. Nice play for Vista Del Lago's Jacob Grandos, the punch, save, and a beauty. But the play of the week comes from Antelope on the opening tip. Major Solon off the jump and major jam. Solon, you got to get down with the play of the week. That's the play of the week, and that is 49ers Sack High Sports for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I'm Aubrey Tolliver. And I'm Robert Bronstein. Join us next week to meet the Natomas wrestler working relentlessly to pursue his passions. We will see you then.